Hello folks. Uh, today I'm going to uh, go through my workflow when I'm uh, trying to create a time lapse uh, specific to the sun and pictures that I took uh, this past week of the um, of the activity on the sun. Uh, had a nice sunspot that moved across the uh, the rim of the sun and and uh, I saw a lot of people on YouTube were imaging it as well. Um, I understand that we had a solar flare that was larger. Uh, it was the largest one since 2017. And uh, the uh, people that are tracking that 11 year cycle are saying that uh, they feel like that the activity on the sun is, is picked up and will continue to pick up. So. That's good and bad. Uh, it's good because I love taking pictures of that activity. It's bad because uh, those that kind of activity can disrupt uh, the electronic, the electric grid on our planet. And uh, already there were effects of this last flare on uh, on shortwave radio. And uh, but it was nothing like the uh, uh, the flare in 2017. Uh, all that being said, uh, I'm going to be uh, processing, and i got to tell you a joke on me. Um, I took the images two days ago that I'm going to be working on, and uh, I batch processed them because at the time I had no intention of doing a video on how I make a time lapse. So uh, I went ahead and batch processed them in AutoStackard, and that took several hours. And uh, I really don't know how long it took. I just started the batch processing, and later that day I came back, and, and it had done uh, its job. And uh, so um, it, it, it was evening time, and I had planned on doing some deep space uh, photography, so uh, I didn't fool with it. And then uh, later that night, uh, I decided that uh, I was going to move those files to uh, another hard drive, uh, move them off of my uh, laptop, and move them onto a hard drive. Actually, they were on an SSE drive that's attached, it's external to my hard, my laptop, and I was just going to move those to a larger 10 terabyte drive that I use, usually store my uh, uh, astrophotography pictures. And, and uh, when I did that, uh, I, I thought I had completed successfully the transfer and uh, and so I went back to the SSC drive on my laptop and deleted all those files well I ended up deleting the ones that were processed not the ones I kept the uh, I moved the original and deleted the processed so um, I have to do this all over again I thought well since I'm gonna have to do it all over again um, I'll just uh, do a, uh, a YouTube video on uh, how I go about it. So I'm not sure it's going to turn out. Um, two out of ten will turn out. Eight out of ten are a bust. But regardless, you'll see what I do, right or wrong, uh, when I try to make one of these things. So with that being said, uh, let me uh, share my screen with you and. Uh, Bring up Auto Stackert, which um, is going to be uh, down here somewhere. There we go. And while that's booting up, I'm going to uh, close out some uh, windows that uh, I guess yeah, some windows that I see that you don't that are associated with my streaming software. Uh, doo -doop. I don't need comments and uh, so here we go um, I took flat frames along with the uh, uh, live images live videos of the Sun so the first thing I want to do is I want to uh, uh, locate the files first <laughs> And this isn't going to be as responsive as um, I would like. And the reason for that is that 
I used Max and AutoStackard is a Windows program. So is Registax. So is IMPPG. So is PIP. And all of those I use for um, this processing. And so what I have to do is move those files back and forth to uh, my uh, main. I'm on my main desktop, which is a uh, iMac and uh, I am connected via Wi-Fi to my laptop which is right behind me. I've moved it in from outside <clears throat> and it's sitting right behind me. So uh, I'm going to use my desktop and uh, talk to my laptop and so you're seeing the laptop screen. Uh, the only problem is that there's sometimes a little lag time and that's just Wi-Fi. I want to go to the fourth and um, I took Proms and I took uh, uh, images for the time lapse and these are the uh, proms that I took. Uh, I'm going to open, I'm not sure I have a player in uh, Windows for these. Yep, I do. Here's a live picture of the prom. I did enough of these so that I can do a time lapse with this. And uh, but today I want to uh, bring up the sunspot and I'll open one of those up too for you and uh, we just open up the first one and let's reduce the size of that a little bit see if we can't get the whole thing in the frame um, this was the first video that I captured and uh, as you can see uh, we have a pretty defined sunspot and uh, coming off of that sunspot right over here is the solar flare and although you cannot see it it's there and I'll show you because what I'm going to do first before I batch process these is I'm going to process one image and that way you'll be able to see what my uh, optimal goal is going to be so let's um, let's go ahead and process this image I do need to open up my flats because I've got some uh, terrible flats uh, as you can see these are the spots on my uh, flats and um, they're very unbecoming but they're also on my main image so what I'm going to do that's what the flat looks like so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open my main image and we'll go back to the first one and you can see there's one of those spots there's one of those spots there's one there I think there's some dirt there. So what we're going to do is go to image calibration and I already created a master flat so I'm just going to load that master flat and uh, let me go back to my uh, did I say wait what did I click on let me cancel. Let's image calibration, load master flat. Well, where is it? I know it's there. Maybe I didn't create one. So let's create a master flat. So we'll go to image calibration. I thought I created one. It must have been the night before. So uh, I'm going to have to open one. We'll go back. We're going to go to master flat. We're going to pull up this video. I'm going to go to image calibration. I'm going to put create a master flat. And I'm going to call this master flat. And I'll leave it as a TIFF file. It's saving it now. Here's you can hear Charlie in the background. I call him Astro Dog. 
wherever I go, he goes. I go out to the mount at night. He follows me and sits next to me. I stay up to 3 in the morning. He's at, right behind me. There's a window overlooking our front yard, and he stays perched up there looking out the window. Very dedicated dog. Okay, we have saved the file, so what I'm going to do is open up. I'm taking you on a convoluted way of processing this. And now we're going to go to image calibration and we're going to load the master fat flat because we have finally done one. And there it is. Now, before I bring that up, look at this smudge right here. Just look at one of them. And as I open this up, you'll see it go away. There it went. So it removed uh, that flat. You may not have noticed it, but it also kind of brightened this area here because that flat showed some vignetting. And uh, so it kind of brightened this, which I'll end up cropping out. But um, that was one of the negative effects of that particular flat. And uh, so anyway, you get some good and bad, but by and large, you do remove the unsightly dust and smudges that accumulate on your optical train and there's a lot of glass between <coughs> the sensor and the front of front elements of your telescope because you have the quark chromosphere that sits in between and uh, that's uh, in and of itself as uh, uh, two fate places where uh, dust and smudges could accumulate so what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, click improve tracking <clears throat> and all of these um, options that, that, that I think these uh, I'm not sure by default what's checked but this is what I check when doing uh, planets no when doing the sun or um, the moon. If I'm doing planets, I'm going to go over here and pick this option. Uh, and I will tell you, I'll be the first to tell you, I'm the poorest planet imager on the planet. Uh, I don't do much of it, and uh, but I'm not good at it. And maybe that's why I don't want to do any more of it. But at any rate, uh, I sit, I'm sitting right behind me. I have a 12-inch Smith Cassegrain that uh, has enough reach uh, to, uh, to, to and I have Barlow's from Teleview, Pyramates, 2X to 4X. So it isn't that I can't get out there. It's just that when I get out there, what I get, I just don't like. And, uh, and I know a lot of remedies are found in AutoStack or Registack and other software, but um, I just haven't taken the time to do that. And, my goodness, I see such great planet images. Um, maybe at a later time, but when I have a free night, clear night, uh, I'm looking for something in deep space because that's really my first uh, passion. That's where my interests really lie. So we're going to analyze. And what this is going to do, it's going to I, I, I go through each frame. These are, uh, I took 1,000 frames. Um, an AVA file and it's going to look through each frame and it's going to evaluate it and uh, for uh, uh, quality and uh, and then it's going to stack it and what this is telling me is that 75% this is the 50% quality line that means that anything above this is better than 50% per <coughs> percentile this first image here, about right there, is my best image. Or if I click here, well, it doesn't look like it. I probably right not on target, but that's supposed to be one of my better images. As I go over, there's probably one better. But 50% uh, of them are above the quality line, and it looks like we're this graph intersects that I roughly only have around 25% uh, of my files are worth a flip. The other 75% I'm going to get rid of. So 
Uh, I kind of already know that in advance. I've done these before. So I'm going to keep 250 uh, frames out of the 1,000 frame video that I did. And uh, I'm going to get rid of our auto stacker. It's going to purge the rest of those and it's going to stack those. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to place a grid over the, uh, the sun's surface and uh, I'm going to collect, select 104 uh, I'm going to add a few here and I'm only going to add some on the edges because I know that some of these videos that I did uh, they're going to wobble all over the place because this mount was not uh, polar aligned and uh, I had some drift and although I babysat the mount and I moved the uh, telescope uh, back to center uh, whenever I saw it drifting I walked away from this several times and I uh, had it programmed, had shortcut programmed to take the time lapse uh, one out right after the other with 20 second intervals between frames but uh, I spent a lot of the day just uh, watching the images coming in and moving them out uh, towards uh, the center. So what I do know is that the, the sun is going to move back and forth and wobble all over the screen as you look at the 300 images that I took. And for that reason, I want to give some, some traction out here beyond where the sun's rim is because when it starts its uh, analyzation here and stacking, uh, I want to make sure that the images come in that are further out this way uh, get uh, suitable treatment. So with that being said, let's run a stack. And it's going to take, uh, well the cat's come and joined us. <laughs> He's hungry. And uh, this is morning time in the Overstreet house. Okay we're done. For the time being I'm going to uh, shut this uh, auto stacker down as I will not use it from this point forward and uh, I'm going to bring up uh, uh, IMPPG and uh, I'm going to open up the file and uh, I was working on some pictures from uh, the uh, Solar Scout that I took uh, this past week uh, let's go up down to the fourth. We want to go down to Sunspot. Let's open this up. And there's our TIFF file. And I'm going to bring my curve up. Uh, by the way, my curve just opens, but if you're using INPPG for the first time, you can just go to this little squiggly looking thing and that's your curve, edi curve editor and it will bring it up. Um, now a lot of my solar processing friends are real uh, fans of Registacks and, and I do like Registacks uh, but what I want to do I can't do in Registacks or I don't know how to do in Registacks uh, but I do know how to do that in uh, IMPPG. So uh, I want to be able to see the sun's surface with some detail similar to what the wavelets can do in Registax, but I also want to be able to see this prom that I know is out there. And so the way I hope to approach it, it probably will not work today, is I'm going to click on Inversion uh, before I get started, I'm going to go on up here to uh, uh, edit, and I'm going to. You notice that only a small box comes open when you uh, start uh, to to do your uh, uh, edits, and the reason for that is to help speed things up. Uh, because it slows things down when you start moving sliders and you're processing the whole image. But I actually prefer to see what the whole image is doing specific now to the fact that I want to do this prom. So I'm going to uh, pick this option, Select and Process All. 
So whatever I do from now on, uh, the whole the whole bloody image, the sun and the sky is going to be affected. So what I'm going to do, which is a little delicate here for my old hands, is I'm going to grab this and bring it all the way down here. I'm going to make a anchor point about right there. And then I'm going to bring this up following really the line of that histogram. And so what I've got going on now is my prom, but I've lost my surface. So I'm going to try to figure out where that went. And I'm bringing that out, but I've lost my prom. So let's see if we can't get that back here. And already you can see it's a game of, of moving uh, anchor points until you're able to, uh, a little bit too much, until you're able to get. Now, keep in mind, my, uh, my goal really is to uh, have both the sun surface and the uh, prominences along the rim. Plus, I'd like to see a real bright uh, a set of activity of little small uh, proms along the rim if I can. And uh, so I'm going to leave it here because I know I can build a mask in Pix Insight and bring in levels and add the contrast that I want. But uh, I might move this just a little bit. Uh, I got it darker back here in the where you can't see as well and it's really blown out here I've got to fix that before I, I leave here okay I think I have okay I think that's going to show really well particularly this what's going to happen in Pix Insight though this white's going to be dark and this dark's going to be red and uh, I want to get rid of that kind of that white there you go alright I'm going to have to work with that so far uh, I can bring out the detail with some sharpening modest sharpening here but I'm going to do a little bit uh, while I'm in IMPPG, I'm going to take the Sigma and run it up to about 1400. And then I'm going to come down to the Sigma for Unsharp Mask and I'm going to run it up to about 1400 as well. And the amount I'm going to bring up to taste. And I think I'm going to leave it in that neighborhood. Alright. Uh, maybe a little more. It's just uh, suit, move, and suit to taste. Suit your taste. Um, what I'm not liking, really, and I'm going to bring this back down, is the sharpening is causing some artifacts on my prom. They're really hard to get out of, so I'm going to. Uh, count on sharpening to go on in in my other software and I'll treat the prom a little bit differently because I don't want to bring out those artifacts um, so what I'm going to do because I'm going to need uh, I'm going to batch process these as well so I'm going to go up to file and I'm going to go, you can see where you have a batch processing option. So after I batch process everything in AutoStackert, I'm going to load my process settings, which I'm about to save. And I will open up all of the files and I will batch process those as well. And you can already see how much time you do save moving sliders, building a graph. 
uh, curves uh, graph and so uh, let's go ahead and save these process settings and I'm going to call this uh, sunspot 7421 TL for time lapse already have an inversion curve created and so okay all right um, I am uh, going to now close well we're just going to minimize this we'll be coming back to it and I'm going to go to auto stacker uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to op uh, open nope sorry by the way let me explain what I'm about to do uh, I'm going to open up all of the files not just one and I'm going to flat uh, remove with the flat frame all of the dust from all of the files while I am batching these pictures to be uh, uh, put then into IMPPG and then once I get them into IMPPG they're saved to uh, an external hard drive which uh, I'll connect to this computer and pull up in PixInsight and we'll do some cropping and do some sharpening then we put those back into a program called PIP and we're going to do an alignment and we're going to stack all of those so that they are aligned one on top of the other hopefully prayerfully uh, then we're going to go back into PixInsight and uh, we're going to add color and probably a few curves adjustment and um, maybe some more specific uh, contrast sharpening to the uh, sun's surface apart from the proms and then the proms apart from the sun's surface as finishing touches. We will batch all of the images using the process container and uh, to dump all of our files in and uh, so that will be uh, uh, a sequence of steps that really are speedy once you get through the time it takes for uh, each of these software programs to uh, process each of the images. So with that being said, let's open our fat flat frame because we need to have, I don't need that, I need to image calibration, load flat, flat. there it is, we're going to load that. So we'll have that in inventory. And now we're going to go and open up all of the sunspots. Here they are. And we're going to select them all and open. And that's what it's doing. Give it a minute. The first one will show up. And the first thing I'm going to do is analyze. Just like we did when we did the one uh, image. Now you notice the flat uh, frame was already in, uh, set up so it removed the um, flats and it also created um, well it's not so bad on this one. Okay it finished analyzing so now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, uh, add our grid. We're going to go to 104 a lot of people choose to elect uh, more points. Uh, that's uh, really not necessary. I didn't know that, but uh, I did an exchange of uh, emails with Emil Krakamp, who created this software, and uh, asking him for advice. And uh, he 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 did a video that uh, is worth seeing uh, through Woodland Hills Astronomy that uh, he'll only put six or seven large ones around here at critical points and uh, 
and some on the rim and uh, that's all he usually uses but uh, again I'm kind of anal about the whole thing and uh, so I go ahead and make adjustments for the fact that I'm going to have a lot of these I know I am that are going to uh, be in a different position than this particular sun uh, sun image is right now so with that being said the process is about to begin and uh, this is going to go on for several hours because after this one has been processed it's going to advance to the second frame uh, and then the third fourth until all 300 are done so it's pretty cool and when it's done uh, I'll come back to you right now uh, we're going to just kind of put things on hold I'm back going to give you an update let me uh, bring my mic back uh, but uh, it's been a little over an hour and uh, we have 143 images down here that have been uh, processed so it takes two hours there's 300 images uh, to go through so I'll be back with you when uh, we've completed uh, by the way um, the question is, is why do a time lapse and um, I think uh, for a number of reasons. One is that uh, if you're watching uh, the sun visually or if you're taking a picture, you really can't see any movement or activity. But uh, when you take multiple pictures in sequence over a period of hours, then uh, you'll see some swirling and sometimes some pop-up flares around the sunspot and, uh, and you'll see the uh, prominences uh, doing their thing. So um, that's the simple e reason. So I'll be back with you when we've uh, completed this. Okay, we have finished. Um, these are the uh, processed files that uh, we ran in a batch process through AutoStackert. Uh, we have uh, 306 files for our time lapse so we don't need that and now we don't need uh, auto stacker uh, let's bring up IMPPG and uh, if you recall uh, we had already processed just one image and I saved this process uh, setting. Uh, I think I saved it as sun, spot, and the date. That's what I usually do. Save, process, yeah, sunspot 7421. Uh, that's when they were taken. So now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to uh, do a batch. Uh, processing of all of the images that we just ran through AutoStackert and we're going to apply this setting to them. So first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to click on batch processing and we're going to add our files. So we'll need to go to um, July 4 here we go and sunspot our auto stacker folder and we're going to select them all and they are there and then we're going to uh, find our process settings and they're down here somewhere. Here. And we're going to open those up we need to select a directory 
and uh, let's go uh, back up to uh, this and we're going to create a new directory and this will be I M P P and we'll select that uh, the output that I want is a 16-bit TIFF and we're going to click start processing and uh, it's on its way it uh, will take a few minutes to process all of these and uh, what we'll ultimately have will be 306 images I think we said and all of those images will look similar to this we hope that's the plan and so when this is finished uh, we'll come back and uh, we'll go to step three step one being auto staggered uh, creating a flat frame from a master uh, flat that was taken and applying that plat and processing 306 uh, video files and then uh, we ran those video files which are now in TIFF format through IMPPG and uh, so from here we're going to go to Pix Insight and we're going to do some more batch sharpening and uh, cropping and then uh, we're going to come back into this software <coughs> and under tools there's an align feature and we're going to align all of our images now that we've cropped them and sharpened them. Uh, the reason why we're not going to align them right now while we have this in uh, uh, IMPPG and we could is that uh, it does a more predictable and a better job <coughs> of aligning after I have ran a sharpening algorithm over the whole image. So uh, hopefully um, we'll have this done in a few minutes and then we can come back and uh, start our third phase of our workflow for this time lapse in uh, Pix Insight. See you then. Okay, uh, so we have uh, ran the batch program and uh, it finished running its uh, routine and uh, we can now uh, minimize this and uh, let's pull up our uh, files and, uh, and let's uh, go to this directory and sunspot and I think we named it IMPPG and okay it does look like Uh, these files were all processed and inverted okay let's just click on one let nebulosity bring it up and that's what we were uh, shooting for and so uh, let's go ahead now and load these files into Pix Insight. I'll tell you what I think I'm going to do first. Um, I'm curious to see and it'll take a little more time and it's not a routine in my workflow. This is uh, totally out of my workflow uh, when doing time lapses but I'm going to bring up the uh, IMPPG again and I'm going to uh, go to uh, tools align sequence and I'm going to input these files I'm going to try to align them uh, and it doesn't 
uh, it's less likely to do an alignment and the reason for that uh, is that there's not a lot of contrast but we do have a very defined sunspot here and we do have a, um, a, a pretty identifiable prominence and the rim looks uh, pretty defined so um, typically what we would be doing is bringing all of these into Pix Insight. I would blink them, I would go through each one and I would delete the ones that aren't uh, up to standard, up to quality. They're obvious. When you see one of those they're just obvious and I just delete those uh, as you'll see in a few minutes and then uh, uh, of the ones we do have we'll process one and then uh, we'll go through a batch process for the rest of them and that will be cropping and sharpening and then we will then bring them back into IMPPG and then we'll align them and uh, it'll be a lot there's a greater chance that they're going to align uh, successfully but let's see if we can add some files and uh, let's go to let's go into where uh, the alignment folder for my last time lapse and we're going to go to sunspot and we're going to go to IMPPG and we're going to take all of these files and we're going to load them uh, we're going to crop so that uh, when they align them if there's a need to crop the edges it will uh, we do want to stabilize the high contrast features and uh, we want to put them in this alignment folder here so we're going to click on start processing and uh, we're off well this is going to take a few minutes so uh, I will get back with you when it's done um, okay <clears throat> IMPPG did align them let's go find the uh, GIF file and uh, fingers are crossed that it's not a real jumpy video let's see it would be in that folder hmm I think is it down to the bottom nope well I may have lost the folder um, is it nope uh, sunspot is it in yeah there we go okay uh, and then this is the alignment and there's the gif alrighty here we go okay it's playing through kinda watch the core of the sunspot it's pretty stable there's not a lot of activity and the luminosity changed some. I see it flickering. Okay, maybe we can, with contrast sharpening and uh, coloration, maybe we can see some more going on. There's not a lot going on on the prom. That may change when we uh, sharpen it. Well, the alignment turned out fine, but it appears that the uh, interesting movements at a minimum. Okay, well, it's going, it's playing backwards and forwards. So, um, all right. Well, it's time to uh, now close this out and. Uh, I'm going to save this to a portable drive and then I'm going to load it onto my PC, I mean my Mac, and uh, then we're going to bring it into Pig Sun Site. So uh, that's going to take me a few minutes. I will be back with you shortly. Okay, I have uh, just one second. Uh, 
took my earphones off while I was moving the uh, directories and uh, plugging them into PixInsight. So I have uh, gone to uh, PixInsight now and the first thing I'm going to do, although I won't use but a couple items, is I'm going to load my process icons. <coughs> process icons are uh, the processes that I typically use when I'm doing galaxies or deep space imaging but uh, I'll be using the process container and the image container today but uh, these are handy to do from image calibration, star alignment, registration, uh, debayering, all the way down through and this is the order by, by uh, that I usually take and one of the handy things about having your process icons kind of set up this way is that while I'm going through uh, uh, a stack of images working on them uh, I can look at well what did I usually do next and uh, so from the beginning to the end this is the order by which I call on processes now PixInsight has a lot of horsepower and there are, are considerably more processes out there uh, and here's some of them and the list goes on and I'm just using a few of those but these are the few that work for me and uh, and I pick up ideas from other youtubers all the time and uh, I keep adding to this process icon list as I continue to learn how to use PixInsight uh, it has a pretty steep learning curve as does Photoshop but uh, stay with it and follow these YouTube people that um, have mastered PixInsight and if I can do it I think anybody can do it okay uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to uh, our process icons I don't save this one and I'm going to go down to Blink and Blink's going to let me look through my images and uh, we're going to load those and I put them on an SSD drive, an external SSD drive. I called it Pick Sunspot. And I'm going to finish with these. Let's load them all. And it's not going to load because they've already been stretched. Uh, I'm not going to really be able to look at them, I don't think. Uh, I don't want to stretch them. And it's going to strip. Well, we can at least see what they look like. You're not going to really be able to see them well because they are stretched. Or the first one is. Alright. See how choppy it is? And how you really couldn't see what was going on if you played this. So that's why we have to align it. But uh, let's just uh, quickly stop this and let me go back up and uh, I'm going to uh, zoom in. I can't run the mouse. I don't want to go back there. And Okay, now let's start uh, blinking through these images. Let's see if we see some that just look blurry. Whoop. Well. I'm focusing on the uh, close to the rim of the sun. Some are sharper than others, but so far I think I think I'll keep oh. uh, so I'm gonna keep I'm gonna get rid of uh ten thirty eight forty nine
and 1039.9. And eleven twenty four thirty four. Okay. And oh, I already did that one. Okay, I'm gonna look through these several more times closer I'm not going to put you through that pain so when I'm done I'll come back with you okay I've gone through this several times and um, the ones that I have selected uh, I selected all of my image and then I went through and uh, I uh, uh, command clicked on each of the files that I am not interested in keeping and I'm going to go down here to move and I'm going to click on move and it's going to move the selected files and uh, let me go back to my SSD drive picks insight and it's going to go to there so let's uh, now uh, close out blink close out this file and we're going to open one of those uh, images and we're going back to our SSD drive it's an external one terabyte uh, SSD drive and uh, we're going to load one and only one and this hasn't been stretched and the first thing we're going to do is crop so I'm going to pull up my uh, dynamic crop tool yeah. and reset that and I'm going to bring it in from there I'm going to bring it up from there I'm going to bring it down from here. I'm going to bring it way over from here. And I don't know. This little problem down here may be worth keeping. I wasn't paying any attention to see if there was any uh, activity on that. Uh, but let's go ahead and let's use this crop and let me zoom in okay as hard as I tried to keep from creating these artifacts out here I sure have a mess of them alright well it is what it is um, now what I want to do is I want to pull up uh, a sharpening program that I'm going to use. I'm going to get a real-time view and it's going to apply a modest uh, sharpening effect that really does bring out those uh, artifacts. Tell you what, this, I'm almost tempted to um, I'm almost tempted not even to sharpen it. To keep those um, apply a minimal amount of sharpening. Gosh, that aggravates me. If it didn't take so much time, I would just start all over again and go back to P IMPPG where uh, I created this first curve. 
and uh, I'd pay a lot. I'd zoom in, and if I'd have zoomed in, I would have seen those. Um, but it is what it is. Okay, I'm going to apply this level of sharpening. I have created some monster artifacts, but I'm going to live with them. And I'm now I'm going to apply. I don't need this anymore. I'm going to apply this crop and sharpening to all of my images. So I'm going to move that up there, and I'm going to uh, bring up my uh, image container and my process container. And I need my history explorer, and I need to pull up this picture that I just worked on and I'm going to take the dynamic crop and drop it in here and the unsharp mask. Now these were the two um, processes in PixInsight that I applied to this one image and that's all that I applied. But what I want to do is I want to apply this same exact crop and the same exact uh, unsharpened feature to all the images. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, uh, load uh, my pictures and I'm going to click here and I'm going to go to uh, do I have the right uh, sunspot lined yep so I'm going to go down here and we're going to load them all I'm going to uh, pick a uh, output directory and that output directory is going to be uh, picks I don't want that uh, I'm going to do it again output directory and it's going to be SSD drive picks and we're going to create a new folder and this is going to be S H A R P E N and crop and that's where we're going to put them uh, everything else uh, looks okie dokie so uh, we don't want to override any files we don't want to override any view mask and we want to continue with what's left if we have an abort. Um, I uh, don't need the date and time. I picked this up from Chuck Ayub and uh, just makes a long file name. And so, uh, what I want to do then, I'll drag this process onto my desktop and I'll drag this on top of the process and now it's going to go through each of my images it's going to apply this effect on all 300 And what I'm going to do, it's going to take a few seconds, and as soon as that's done, I'm going to disconnect this uh, SSD drive that I'm using on my uh, iMac, and I'm going to go plug it into my uh, Windows laptop that has the IMPPG software, because we're now going to align the software. And once we have it aligned, we're going to bring it back into uh, uh, Pix Insight, and that's where we're going to colorize it using the process container and the image container. We'll first convert it to an RGB file since these are mono, then we'll apply color, and if there's any other uh, processes I can think of that I might be able to do to minimize those artifacts around the sun flares and uh, prominences. I'll try to figure that out in the meantime. But uh, so I'm going to put this on like that pause and I'll be back when it's done. 
Okay, it's finished and uh, I have uh, moved the SSD drive from my iMac to my uh, laptop that's running IMPPG and let's make sure that uh, my SD, SSD drive got picked up and there it is and let's go down to Picks Sunspot and we called that directory sharpen and crop so let's open up one of these files and see what it looks like in nebulosity uh, nebulosity applies a stretch we want to undo that and this is what it's I'll apply my own curves to it and when we go back into picks but this is our crop and this is our sharpening and those artifacts look bad but I don't know if they look they may look a little bit better <coughs> in nebulosity than they did in it picks it anyway they're there so um, so that's what we're working with and that's what we're going to try to align fingers crossed uh, it should work because we did successfully align all of the images and it didn't jump around too bad uh, when I went into Pix Insight, I did blink and remove some of the ones that were not as sharp, and uh, so that's where we are. All right, let's close this out. Let's open IMPPG, and uh, we would no longer need this curves, but it doesn't matter. Uh, we're going to go to Align Process, and we're going to click on Add Files. Let's make sure I uh, add the right ones. <clears throat> We're going to go to Picks. Actually, we're going to go to, uh, let me back up here. One of my Sunspot oh, alignment. Let's go to alignment and I can't find my files. Let's see. Uh, we did curves. What file? Where am I? Am I on the SSD drive? No. That's part of the problem. Okay. We did sharpen and crop, so I would have been there all day looking for those. Let's load these up. <coughs> um, we're going to leave subpixel alignment checked, crop the intersection. Um, let's use the stabilize high contrast features, and if that doesn't work, we'll come try to come back and use align on the solar limb. Uh, and we want to create a new um, directory and just remember where I, I made it. Uh, let's go back to uh, my SSD drive because we're going to have to move this over to. Let's uh, going to create a new one called Aligned. and ready for picks inside and uh, let's see what happens uh, it's going to take a little while so while it's doing its thing I'm going to uh, uh, give you some relief I'll be back when it's done okay <clears throat> I have aligned them successfully I don't know what they're going to look like when we put them in a movie but uh, they have been aligned and now we're going to uh, I was looking at them uh, this is in the folder aligned picks insight now I'm going to disconnect um, the hard drive from uh, my laptop and I'm going to bring it back and put it on my uh, desktop my iMac 
and we're going back into Pix Insight. This time, we're going to colorize them and run some curves to see if we can't uh, bring out some detail without creating uh, those artifacts. Um, I, I really made a stupid mistake, uh, and, and I make a lot of them, and, uh, but I really probably didn't need to apply any sharpening and, uh, on that first trip to Pix Insight. I just needed to crop it. And the reason is that sharpening is what brought out those artifacts. Uh, and the only reason why I do that sharpening at that stage is to help the alignment process because the more contrast these images have, the better it aligns. But if you remember, I was just curious to see if it would align without doing anything, and it did. So really the sharpening uh, really didn't need to be applied. So, uh, uh, it, but I did. So uh, I'm dealing with those artifacts. Uh, when I have some time, I'm going to go back and reprocess this uh, if uh, we ultimately see some decent movement before I uh, post this on uh, Astro Ben or anywhere else where I would be embarrassed uh, otherwise. So uh, with that being said, uh, I'm going to go load this onto my uh, iMac and then we'll get started in Pix Insight. Okay, we're back in Pix Insight. Let's get rid of this. We don't need the crop. We don't need this uh, process uh, icon. We actually don't need this picture anymore either, so let's get rid of it. And um, let's go ahead now and bring up one of our uh, aligned pictures and we're going to be on our SSD drive and we want these pictures and let's just pick the first one it's just as good as any and it's a much smaller file since we cropped it and we want to colorize it so we want to go up to process and uh, we're going to go down to color spaces and convert to RGB. And then we're going to go over to curves. And let's go ahead and get a real time preview. I'm going to reset this. And uh, let's take the R channel and let's drag it up. Let's take the green channel, let's drag it down, and let's take the blue channel, and let's drag it down. Now this is to taste. Uh, that's fine. Let's apply that. And then let's take the RGB and luminosity and let's apply. I want to reset this. Actually, I want to reset this real time. And I'm going to try to add a little of a contrast curve without creating. those bubbles. By the way, I sent a uh, an email to a friend of mine who is a genius in Pix Insight with one of these images to see if he had any suggestions and I haven't heard back. I could try masking them out and uh, not quite sure exactly what I would do. All right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, apply this contrast curve. And uh, let's close that out. Let's minimize that image. 
I need it because I'm going to reference it with my inner, with my Explorer. I need the process container and the image container. Let's go to our Explorer. Let's find our image up there, which is aligned, aligned. We converted to RGB. We did a curves transformation for color and a curves transformation for uh, contrast. Now let's go find our files and they're in the uh, this should be them but let's go to double check Pix Insight uh, let me see that's not them that is them okay Yeah. All right, let's bring those up. And did I get them all? Yep. And let's load them. We need an output directory. And I think I'm going to go ahead and put that out directory output directory inside this one and I'm going to call this uh, colored contrast and it's ready for IMPPG to make a gift. So let's open that up. We're not going to add the uh, date to this either. Uh, we've got our output directory. I think I have everything I need. So let's take our processes and let's dump that process on our desktop. And then let's take our images and run them through the processes. And again, this is going to take uh, a few minutes. I'll let you know when it's done. Okay, that uh, process and Pix Insight worked. I disconnected the hard drive from my iMac and I uh, reconnected it to my laptop. That's running IMPPG and we're going to bring that back up. And now we're going to, uh, nope, we don't need IMPPG, we need PIPP, PIP. So it's over here somewhere, here you go. PIP is the program that uh, I will use to uh, 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 create my GIF file. So we're going to add the images and let's go find them. They're on the SSD drive. Uh, there we go. And here. Uh, here, here, and there are our colored and aligned and contrast added pictures. Yes, we want to join mode, and that's what, let's see, we don't want to make any changes to that. If we did, we could make some changes and uh, update all of our images. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and I use Pix Insight to make all of those changes. And uh, I'm going to leave quality alone, animation. I want to play all frames in reverse water order after. Um, we uh, play it forward and uh, let's see we got everything else play all frames in forward order and then output options uh, I want an animated gift uh, I prefer an AVI file but an animated gift can be uploaded to Astrobin I can't upload an AVI file I want to continue looping uh, 
frame rate will be set to 35. Neutral quality, DD, good quality is fine. Let's go to processing. And everything's going to be left to default. And we're going to start processing. And it's going through its routine. Fingers crossed. Because this is too going to take a few minutes, I'm going to put this on pause and I'll be back when it is completed. We are only at 2% right now. Okay, it's completed its process. Let's bring up uh, the directory that has, let's see, color, contrast, and then there's our pip file. Uh, here's our GIF. Let's open it up. Fingers crossed, and it's running. There's a little activity going on right here, but it doesn't show that much more than it did in the black and white. And I'm looking at the prompts now. Uh, and there's really just not I mentioned I may go back and reprocess this I'm not uh, there's just not a lot going on and that's sort of the gamble you take because when you're imaging the Sun uh, you don't see really any movement it's only until you put a time-lapse together that you'll know if you were fortunate enough to spot a flare coming off of the surface but uh, that is it. So what we're going to do is um, call it a day. And uh, I hope you were able to uh, kind of follow the process. I'll kind of give it a brief review. But we uh, first, uh, unfortunately for me, I have to go back and forth with a, a Mac to a Windows, back to Mac to Windows and back and forth. Uh, most of the folks that I know that are on Windows have that uh, don't have that Mac issue and uh, so it's uh, process is a lot easier to follow but uh, once you've taken your uh, Sun images and I might suggest that when you start imaging the Sun uh, overexpose it let's say you're focusing on a, t uh, a sunspot and that's usually what draws my attention to something happening on the Sun and once that draws my attention then I'm going to overexpose it to see if there just happens to be a worthwhile prominence in close to the sunspot or that I could put in the frame and if there is then when I start imaging I will run the exposure up as close as I can as high as I can without clipping and normally if I was just going to image uh, just the sunspot and I didn't have a nearby or a prominence worth imaging <coughs> then uh, I would only run my histogram over to about 75 percent of the way uh, so that I'm considerably far from the clipping side of the uh, lights but if I think there's a prom worth imaging then I'm going to run the exposure all the histogram all the way to the right but I'm going to stop just short of clipping the lights and that way when I do an inversion this will be darker and this will be lighter and uh, I'll have a chance of getting more detail out of the prom so um, I tried doing that on this one and uh, I tried doing it on all of them where I have a sunspot and a prom that's going to be in the same uh, frame uh, the other thing that might be 
uh, noteworthy is that uh, I uh, use a program called uh, let me go over here called Sun Forecast and uh, before I do any imaging on the sun and I'll uh, just bring up one of the these are real life real time cameras uh, located all over the world at different places and it's showing you what's going on in the sun right now at this very top minute uh, so this is the date and this is the time and uh, I can uh, cycle through these and uh, pick different cameras Uh, there looks it looks like that uh, if I didn't have clouds outside that framing this about right here could uh, show some uh, possible activity here here and on the rim and even maybe here uh, there could be uh, a nice prom and uh, possibly some swirling some activity there possible some there uh, you don't know this looks like the most promising part of the Sun to image right now on July 7th so with that being said by the way uh, this is the time in mono allow uh, these are uh, real-time images taken from Toledo Big Bear Mona Loy El Teatro Learmouth uh, so give you an idea of what's going on in the world and you know I mispronounced every one of those I'm sure okay well with that being said um, let's just call it a day I was um, hoping hopeful I could get through this with uh, a completed uh, time lapse we did we just don't have much to show for it so uh, look forward to seeing you back on YouTube if this was helpful uh, consider liking it and if you want to see more of these, if you subscribe, I'm pretty sure they notify you about one that's coming up. Uh, if you'll notice on my YouTube channel, I do a lot of live imaging, either deep space or the sun. In fact, whenever I image, I try to do it live. So uh, all the boo-boos and mistakes I make, possibly you can learn from them. And do I make them? Have a great rest of the week. This is the night sky imager bidding you guys clear skies.